the reason I wrote The Next Civil War is because basically of a, of a one single theory called complementary radicalization, right? Which is that as you, as you, as politics dissolves, right? As like in Canada, there are left-wing people and right-wing people who have exactly the same policy objectives and they, and they make them, right? They like enact policies. That's what they do, right? Like for example, I, I live in Ontario. I probably will vote liberal next election. My whole family's in Alberta. They all vote, cons- they will vote conservative forever. Um, there is no, our, we, we are absolutely fine with each other, right? Like that would not even, we, it would never be brought up. Like it, I, it would not even be considered as a subject of, a, I mean, maybe a joke. Like maybe as a little <clears throat> light joke, but it doesn't really matter. Here, this has become this huge dividing line. And as, like what happens in complementary radicalization is that as people, as the right gets more right, it makes the left go more left, which makes the right go more right, which makes the left go more left. And you get, and also as you separate from reality, right, i.e. government, i.e. what are we going to do with shared reality or like- policy? Like, like we have politics in order to enact policies for our thing. But as we were saying before, like conservatives have been sending this stream of people to disrupt Washington. Washington doesn't change. Left has been sending to enact all these things. Government doesn't change. Yep. Right. Like they link arms in the street. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You go in like one thing you can be sure of when you see a rally on the street, it will have no effect. It will have no effect on anything, right? Um, I actually, I, I do, I disagree a little bit. Yeah, I think for the most part it is true, and we have a lot of data showing that uh, DC only cares about the opinions of the ultra wealthy. Yeah. However, oh well, this, I mean, literally, it's it's not even the, the, the opinions of the ultra wealthy. It is what money you have. But I will give one example like, where the left at least has some, some, in that. Uh, Despite the fact that we are seeing people go around tearing down the, the flyers of the Israeli civilians yeah. who are kidnapped, Biden came out and said, we're going to combat Islamophobia. Right. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. The protests that we're seeing that are, are defending and advocating for violence are left protests in support of Hamas. Well, he's I saying not- we're going to defend Islamophobia while we're sending a aircraft carrier to Israel. And two of them. <laughs> right, and two troops. of them. But yeah. what do we see? We see in New York. Well, left- you, know, you know, the left died this month, right? Like oh, the, absolutely. The, 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 the left th- this month is um like it the left is you're going to have to find a whole you're going to have to find a whole other subject. Well, that my, that's my point. Like you're gonna, like you're gonna act, you're actually like the 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 um Amy Schumer the is campus gone. reform. Like the, like it, it's like the, the left as a unified progressive movements as a unified force essentially ended. Absolutely. In, in October 2023. 2023 However, it was rough because the 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 first kind of volley was June with the uh, with the way that people reacted to uh, Gay Pride Month and and the LGBT. Oh stuff yeah, yeah. Light, Target. Yeah, all that stuff. And then with the additional response by the cheering left, for Hamas. For, well, I, 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 I am I, not never, saying yeah, every pro. Deal. I'm not not saying every pro Palestinian cheered for Hamas. I'm saying specifically in New York, there were several rallies where they have been consistently to this day cheering for Hamas. Uh, 100%. And, and you know, left-wing people are not idiots. They look at that and they're like, th- that's not, is that what we're doing? Is it, cause that's not what I'm doing. Yes, but hold right? on. Right. And like, and honestly, like, th- so what, Hassan, what you're seeing let, is- let me, let me just say, yeah. Hassan Piker, the biggest left-wing live streamer yeah. to Gen Z and some, old, and some younger millennials adamantly uh, condemn, it criticizes Israel, supports Palestine, that perspective is still dominant and prominent among many on the left, and it's not going to break. No, I, I think you're right. But what's uh, what's happening is that um, any kind of so, like, you know, I never forget a conversation I had with an FBI agent. We were talking about extremists and we we're like, I was like, so, you know, left wing has extremists. Why do they never form themselves into these? Like you're out there trying to stop <clears throat> these groups that are v- violently armed on the right. Why does the left never have these the same kind of like armed figures. And he said they do. He said they destroy themselves before they can get to that point. <laughs> they, they he said they like they Fair point. they they annihilate their they have so little solidarity that they annihilate themselves before they can ever get to the point where they have where I, they I, form I, themselves into actual units. This is a, good, a really good point because I completely agree. Yeah. There are anti cells. There are far, Yeah, but they are, there are they are the most powerless people on earth. They but, are useless. What, but but they are chaos. I, oh yeah, they're they're well, they're, they're so, intellectual chaos, and they're the same thing that you find of people so, who go and shoot up uh, at Walmarts. I mean, and they're so, like, they're, right, and so yeah. the issue is, if the chaos builds too much, the system destabilizes and, and breaks. 
Well, we're already but seeing I, that. But That's I, what we're talking about. Right. So I do agree that with something like right wing militias, they, they understand hierarchy and authority and solidarity better than the left does. But the left has this bulk low tier in large numbers that. Yes, but it's also, you have to understand that they're institutions and they've been largely based in institutions. Like I went to the 2018, like, you know, a lot of these things happen on campuses and someone in, in humanities departments and campuses are falling apart. Like if that's your enemy, like, I don't think that's the issue. That's, no, but the, you have that's to, like the weakest enemy that you can but the have. Danger, and that's why I don't think it is. I think big yeah. tech is the is the issue. Well, the danger, that's listen, the, all our, the, the danger, and that's for all of us. Yeah, I the mean, danger, that's, true, that's the honest thing we could be united with. The big about. danger with the left is the destabilization that the left does, causing the, the government to react by coming down on the whole populace. Oh, no, but that's everyone. I mean, that like, <clears> you know, that, that's, you know, you got people firing at the FBI from the right. I mean, like the, the chaos that's coming is definitely... The fringes of both. This is what happens, and this is what this is what happens in other countries, right? So, no, like, it's not like you can blame people, and you can say like, "Oh, this one's worse than this one." This one, but the the point but is, it's the chaos is, comes from I, everywhere. That's what happened in. That's I mean, not to not to to bring up, you know, the I hate to bring up Hitler, but the whole reason, uh, that, the reason we've lost the the, re, well, the <laughs> we reason, all gotta go. But the, but the reason that he <laughs> we're live streaming conversations about I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Hitler. talking. I'm not talking about him. But I'm talking about the Weimar Republic. The fighting between the left and the right yes. in the streets is why the people called for a strong government to stop the fighting. So we're not talking about Hitler himself. I'm talking about <laughs> let me the people beforehand. Uh, Weimar is close enough. Man. I want to. I oh, gotta go. Come on now. <laughs> the, I gotta go. The, <laughs> the shot heard, in my opinion. The shot heard around the world for the next civil war, should it happen, will likely come from the right and not the left. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, well, the, the odds of that are like 50 to 4. And it's not because I am saying that there's a far fringe right wing extremist who's going to go to a racist tech. No, 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 yeah. no. The left is a destabilizing force. I call them chaos. I call them fire. But the right, what I, what I fear is I mentioned the border. The shot heard around the world is not going to be a bunch of people pulling up some new flag of, you know, a new American flag or whatever and screaming revolution. It's going to be... 14 guys in a militia saying the federal government is in defiance of state law and federal law, and we're going to go s set up our own checkpoint on this road. The federal government will pull up and be like, we're the authority here. And they're going to say, you guys are in violation of the law. That's chapter one of the next civil war. Exactly. It's, it is not the left that's going to do this. The left is going to do stupid things like throwing firebombs and acting like like wild property chaos. crime, low level yeah. violence, low level, low property level crime. widespread property, crime. but with that's this, they're much this, more likely to do that. This is why I said watching the federal government raise the razor wire to allow lawbreakers to break the law was terrifying to me because that is the catalyst for a group, a vigilante. Not, I can't even call it vigilante because they're effectively operating on the side of the law. But more importantly, you have the risk of state versus federal violence. If Texas says enough, they are in violation of state and federal law. The National Guard will go in and stop the CBP from breaking the law. Now you've got government versus government. No, that that to me is highly unlikely. I mean, I looked at that scenario. I talked it over with the colonel who drew up. Like, that's... I don't know. That would, that would just be... No, because first of all, one of, the more, one of the more interesting things that the U.S. military did was like in every other country, it, it tends to work by these battalions that are formed in local communities. And they that's like, you know, in Alberta, like when you get the soldiers for the Canadian military, they come from the same towns and yeah. the same farm towns and they fight. US, after, the sec, after the Civil War, the U.S. was like, nope, we're not doing that. Because what right. happens is... Yeah, because then it's like suddenly you got someone in the military who's from Georgia and like, do they owe their loyalty to Georgia or to the US? So this was authority. literally the Civil War. Yeah. Um, you had all these West Point graduates. And they left. And uh, a great question by, uh, was it uh, was it Stonewall Jackson maybe? He was Virginia, right? Yeah. He, he wrote something about his loyalty to the United States but the questions of his loyalty to his home, to his neighbors, and his community. Well, that was Robert E. Lee. Robert, Robert E. Lee. There Robert you go. E. Lee had, had that famous comment where right. he, because he was the star of West Point. He was like the, yep, the uh, the, and then he was the like, shining light, and he was like, oh, I'm a Virginia first. My family. Yeah. So my fear, and is, that was like, you know, the thing that was very interesting about that is like the United States was plural before the Civil War. That's right. The famous right. line from National Treasure. Oh, is that in there? Yeah. Nicholas Cage says before the Civil War, it was the United States are. Yeah. And afterwards, it was the United States is. That's right. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's and and so that's like and but the, the military really reflects that, right? So yeah. that that particular conflict is that particular scenario is um is not likely. However, if a county um sheriff yeah does such a thing and they easily could well what, what then, me, then that would then that you really could have i mean that's what the that's what the u.s military is has actively so planned for 
my my fear is the 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 circumstance that I just that we, we're witnessing. I mean, look, it's not the first one. You've got yeah. videos of CBP snipping the razor well, that's wire. It. Yeah, this has been happening for years. But and the, California the, did the same thing too. The, the issue is there is only one answer. Uh huh. Either we do not uphold the law, and the law no long, lo, no longer exists. Yeah. Or the law is upheld, and the federal government. What what needs to happen is, if you are going to take the lawful good approach of we abide by the rules of this nation. We are a nation of laws. Mm -hmm. The sheriff must arrest the CBP who are cutting the barbed wire. Then you have, yeah, then you have a real, well, see, that would be the, like the sheriffs, the constitutional sheriffs have their own point of view on this legally. The federal government has an entirely different point of view. That's, and, and, and that's, exact, a, that's, and that's exactly a, right. And but if, I would also say that um, anyone who wants to go up against the U.S. military in any capacity, um, you know, you're going to lose. Are you sure about that? Yes. Name a war the United States military has won in the oh, past. Oh, they won them all. Like, have you ever read that? Have you ever read that? <laughs> wait, 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 no, wait, wait. You're, you're talking about two different people. Well, no, no, no. It's easy, easy to win. It. Like, why? When have you ever read the book Why We Lost by um, Afghanistan? About Afghanistan. Iraq. It's about Afghanistan. Vietnam. But you know, Korea. Like, he. You're conflating. You two literally things. read this book and you're like, why? When does the losing start? Like they win every single. That's battle. because you're conflating Vietnam. two things. You're you're conflating yeah, that you're conflating the military capability with political ends. Well, that's my point. Yeah, I mean, it's, like, too, it's like the U.S. military yeah. doesn't lose engagements. Yeah, they, they exactly. win every engagement. Exactly. It's the policymakers that fail in the policy. They fail in what what policy is attainable they fail in in deciding what we should use the military for but the military whoa, 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 doesn't whoa, whoa, whoa. lose no, yeah. no, no 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 you're right they win engagements yeah but afghanistan is a really great example of we lost oh well i remember uh, one of the great stories a journalist told me about afghanistan is he was like in afghanistan he was with he was embedded with the taliban this was when they were fighting the soviets and um he saw that one of the Taliban fighters was fighting with a flintlock rifle from that had been taken from the British from 1878, and it, oh. had, it had 1878 ring on. And he was like, yeah, "Whoever 1861. goes up against these guys is going to lose." Like it doesn't make like 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 if you're fighting with a flintlock rifle, you're you're not going to lose. You're going to kill that guy, like, but his kid's going to pick well, it up. Yeah, I mean, That's like, the point. but but, but this what, is I why mean, I, that is the point of the next civil war, right? So, it's like you can control when they when they created the political space in Iraq for elections in the surge, the violence that they had to commit to do that was so great that it made politics irrelevant. They, and that's exactly what could happen in the United States, yeah, they, right? Like they would win against the sheriff. They would, would, I mean, it would not be a contest. It would be like the it would be like an NBA team playing against the white MCA so, pickup team. But like, it doesn't matter if, how much you win, you're still gonna lose. Exactly. Yeah. So they'll win the engagement. Uh, and if, lose. if a local sheriff comes out, yeah. And goes to uh, uh, CBP and says, put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest. They're going to say no. And would you want to be like, would you want to be up against America? If I was, if I was the sheriff, <laughs> like, do you know if, what I mean? If I was the sheriff in the county where Eagle Pass resides, right now, day one, when I saw a video of them sending barbed wire, I would instruct my deputies to arrest any of them on site immediately. But and you I would, would tell, be charged with treason. That's not treason. Treason, uh, treason it would, is it would be abetting. according to the federal government. No, it wouldn't. Treason is providing aid or, or materials to enemies at war. A sheriff only Sedition. has- Sedition. A, a sheriff, a, a, like, but one of the things that they have specifically is piracy, right? So like that involves anything with water. I, I just happen to know this technically because I spent so long with it. Like it, like if, if the federal government would just argue, well, you're interfering with our right to, to but, navigate but, but, piracy. That's not treason. That'd be sedition. Well, Tre yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. Like, yeah, it would be treason it, is abetting an enemy yeah, at the time of that's war. That's right. Yeah, but it would so you'd just be charged with sedition. But like it's so like they don't Maybe. they don't have a Doesn't they don't matter. have the um, well like there's other cases that they may like you know the the federal government the the constitutional sheriff change charges there's only five things for the federal government to do one of them is counterfeiting one of them is piracy I forget what one of them, I think one of them is kidnapping but and then there's okay. um and then there's a couple others that I forget um for the you moment. know what I would do I would arrest them for destruction of state property well you I mean you could try but I mean you wouldn't I absolutely get anywhere would. don't care I mean it you would not all have that is legal required for evil to triumph on. is for good men to do nothing. That, I mean, come on. Like, this kind of moral clarity is so blinding. We're in real situations here. And the real we're situation is- We're trying to deal with, we're trying you to have, deal with complicated, and, um, and, and overlapping I that. bureaucracies. And when you have the law and someone breaking the law, if you decide, I will not uphold it, you may as well not have it. Do you really believe that the loyalty to a county is going to be greater than the loyalty to federal authority? 
What, what, what does that mean? Well, because in this position, you're taking the role of the sheriff. Uh, federal law says these these people are illegal. Well, that's I mean, well. yes, but that's not. I mean, the federal government's doing it. So you know, then your redress would be with the federal government rather if a than cop, like if a cop walks somebody. into a bank and points a gun at the teller and says, "Give me everything." We don't go. The government's doing it. We say this person's committing a crime. Well, not if they've been ordered to do that by the government. Doesn't it's matter. It's still a crime. It's still the a crime. The government, if the maybe federal maybe government dictate. decides to, has all kinds of control over banks, all kinds of controls right, okay. over banks. Like they don't go in with a gun. They just, you know, they can, they have all kinds of Re ways regu of manipulating Regulation banks. is different and we can so argue you're saying that it's that bad. It, I mean, what I'm you're essentially saying about is if the federal government makes a regulatory pull of a bank controls over a, a bank that. that's not what it is essentially committing a crime and we should shoot straw man argument do it well, that it's was an insane, insane straw man an insane straw insane. man you're arresting a you're the a one who brought up a cop walks into a bank so cops walk into banks all the time there is a big difference between a mandate from law for a cop to seize an asset under writ of a judge and a cop deciding to point a gun at a teller and demand money nobody went and pulled up that thing without a mandate Snip That's it. my point. So, like, the point is, you like the actual source of this is this man. And so, let's try about. again. Okay, let's try. Again. A chief of police tells to, his officers. Try it again without morality. A police, try it again a, like you're a, a Roman a trying to come a up with a better system. Let's go. System. A police chief tells two of his guys in his office, "Go point guns at tellers and take money from the vault." And they go, "You got it, boss. What do we do?" I, I'm sorry, but like, if a the, the, the way the that. <sighs> What is this example? What? How? Let me rephrase it. Okay, um, a bank is in violation of their capital control amounts. We're not. Texas is so, not in violation of the law by doing what they're doing. No, no, well, that's the federal government's opinion. Let's say the let's say the bank is actually, and the federal government is wrong and still does. A it. judge has to sign off on it. Yeah, well, judge did I, not sign off on what we're seeing CBP well, do. I, look, you're bringing up this example that I don't know very well, but like. My point is that the federal government interferes with other institutions like literally every minute of every day, right? Like the the, the fact that it's, and, and sometimes they're right and sometimes there they're are wrong. Lines. Sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. And there are lines, but actually there aren't a lot of lines. And the answer right? is, like, is not to witness crimes being committed to say, well, you know, there's lines. No, the answer is to go to court and talk about it like reasonable human beings, like, and, and, and figure it out with lawyers. Like that's why they're there. Like I, I mean, I like I don't think I don't think um, the answer is let's criminalize uh, you know everyone who's trying to impose federal authority. But, and, but and sometimes, and sometimes they're violating federal authority. It's, if it's so the over, answer is there's lots of cases where there's federal <clears throat> overreach. Of course there are, and, and what, the way and, to deal with you, it is like actually having a conversation in court. And so first, what would happen is local law enforcement would approach CBP and say you are hereby ordered to halt pending review from a judge. Have a nice day. Right. The law of our state says no, federal law says no, and you will need to come back with approval from a judge. Instead, they're going and snipping. It, it is insane Look, to me. I mean, I don't know the specifics of this case, so I probably shouldn't talk about it. I mean, you could be right. The but, like it's, but like the point here is that the, there is always going to be a tension between different levels of authority. Absolutely. Right. That happens in Switzerland <sighs> with the cantons and the federal government. It happens yes. in, it. the problem is, it happens in Iceland with the like local municipalities and the larger federal authority. It sure as hell happens in Canada. I mean, we're we're in the middle of all this struggle between the provinces and the and the federal government. I mean, they're 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 it's getting incredibly ugly. Um, but that the problem here is not that tension. Is my point that tension is part of the natural order of a political system. The problem is when the only way that you can respond to that tension is by conjuring fantasies of violence who I mean, who's talking about violence we're talking about like arresting people throwing them in jail when they're coming from the federal government you think an arrest is violence uh, have you ever been arrested yes Wait, i well, mean it was not no violent. well it's not pleasant either but it's not violence i put my hands behind my back i was placed in the car i went to i sat in a room for for 12 hours they let me out and that was the end of it yeah just 12 hours when was that occupation occupy wall street no 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 i never got arrested for that i was arrested for skateboarding uh, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. The only time you've been arrested is for skateboarding. Um, I was arrested for driving on a suspended license, but that was an I bond. Oh, right. So that was they. That's I, funny. They don't often arrest for that. And it was a, it was an illegal stop too. Uh, oh. But he takes me out of the car. He says, "Your license is suspended." I said, "I had no idea." And he goes, "Doesn't matter. Sign this. Have someone come pick you up. You've been arrested and released." That's upsetting. And uh, 
I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's, it's oh, but you didn't go to jail then. They just right. said, they an, just said made you sign right. Oh, okay, got but it. you you are arrested, yeah. you are processed on the spot, right. and then they tell you to go home. But I was actually I did go to jail uh, overnight for skateboarding once, and the judge was so pissed. <laughs> right, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. But it wasn't violent. They set me yeah. down, and they said you're being arrested. They said it was a felony, and then they they put, said it was a felony for skateboarding. Yep. Yeah. Riding my board on the sidewalk downtown Chicago, but the sidewalk was property controlled by the federal government. So they said it was right. criminal damage to federal property. Right, right, right. The judge was livid. And right. he, he was basically like, how dare you waste my time? Yeah, of course. Get stuff out of my courtroom. But um, it wasn't violent. Imagine if you'd had an idiot judge. Your whole life could have changed. Uh, yep. They wanted yeah. to make an example of people. It was three in the morning. Wouldn't have been able to travel? Oh, yeah, of course. Wouldn't have been like... Yep. Uh, life over. Uh, life over. Um, yeah. But the judge was, you know, the, the, the good judge. And right. uh, But my point is... C ceasing someone from committing an my, illegal my, act okay like i'm just saying here let's just why like the problem here is that these debates have gotten so ferocious and so moralistic and so about fundamental principles I'll tell you because why. they're so removed that what the actual business of governing which is texas disagrees with the federal government they take their their steps taken things happen <clears throat> you need to you need to talk it over that gets removed, and instead, it's like let's arrest people and like well, I'll tell you let's why. play out these dramatic scenarios. No, 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 no. And I'll tell you I, why. I just think it's not very fruitful. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Right now, you have almost every state in agreement. The southern border is a crisis. Yeah. Eric Adams, New York City, several other uh, uh, governors yeah. are petitioning the federal government to do something about it, not just border states. Yeah. The simple answer right now is if the plurality, nay, the majority of governance of this nation says stop and the federal government goes we're going to keep breaking the law anyway. well there, i mean the federal government's actually been i mean you know at some it, point as you a need Canadian, to say it's guys, really it's guys, really funny because like we have this very pro-immigration uh -huh. policy but we're no one like illegal immigrants are would absolutely not be accepted by anyone in canada right like that like like uh, like it's a very rule abiding place and would ne like the idea that there's like tens of millions of people illegally just seems insane to me but like <laughs> wait, i mean it's on, america i, I mean uh, america. like on but I, well i understand that there are different reasons for it too and i understand that there's historical context and i understand that there's crisis so, in so, the South, so here's my point and there's, and there's humanitarian <clears throat> reasons as well and there's but like I, surely this has got to be something that people like this here's, is here's, here's, this here's, is one of those things where it's like surely everyone's on the same page like my, there's a there's yes. obvious answers except to this. the federal the, no 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 the, i think the federal government is on the same like they, look, look, they look. want both the solution and also my point is this restriction right if 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 the states over overtly willfully are subverting the law uh, i'm sorry if the federal government is is violating the rights of states and there is no fair adjudication you get system collapse yeah i mean see to me the more critical problem like because illegal immigration is one of those problems that's like i'm not think, but, but let's, let's quite, remove ourselves from this but I don't, I don't think you quite realize what a um like that's the right problem to have right let's like let's, be, because like people like you, it, it is it's a huge boost your car but anyway like no, 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 uh, no, no, the hold abortion on, hold on. question to me but is actually much me, more legally I'll, problematic. i'll give you an example Th what's happening in texas is a granular component of what's causing civil war and i'll explain California in the past census had an extra congressional seat, perhaps two, yeah. because California violates federal law by allowing non-citizens into the country who are then counted in the census and congressional seats and electoral votes are apportioned based on this. This means- They don't have the same thing in Texas? Uh, all, so all states do it, the census based on total people count, not citizen right. count. Yeah. So when- uh, But Texas must have the same thing. With, with non-citizens? Yeah. The, the issue being Texas is resisting. So here's the point. But they're not, they're still counting those people. Yes. And so the, the issue is not whether or not they're counted. It's the willful act of manipulating our electoral college and our Congress through intentionally violating federal law. If Texas says, please help us get, get these people out of this country, we don't want them to be counted in the census. And the Republicans under Trump said the citizenship question should be on the census. The Democrat state said no. It was the Supreme Court said no. And so what happens is California has a disproportionate amount of electoral power in federal government based on violating federal law intentionally. 